This video is not for persons under the age of 13. By watching this video, you are declaring that you are above 13 years of age. <laughs> Hello and welcome to today's watercolour painting. This picture that we're looking at today, the uh, reference image, uh, is, I believe, it's the Bristol Channel. This because I say that because I believe that's the Clifton Suspension Bridge uh, in England, and uh, he's got a little doggy out on a walk. Why not? Let's have a go at it. It's not going to be that complicated. So let's make a start. We'll start by using fairly large brushes and covering large areas. Uh, brushes such as this hake or, or these will do quite okay. Like mop like brushes. Always good to have handy. The paper we're using today is uh, Buckingford, £140 or 300 grams if you're in the UK or elsewhere. It's uh, cold press and this is rough. So that just means it's got nice little bits of bumps in it. And the reason why I've gone for rough is it's not an overly detailed picture. So I want some of the texture to come out in it. So it, it, that's ideal if you're going to use rough. My uh, other thing, obviously, we need is paints. And I'm going to be using my uh, White Knight set. And uh, I'll try and explain. You go for whatever colours you want. You probably have your own paints anyway, but... Uh, I'll try and explain the colours, but colour is not necessarily that relevant. It's more about tone. Off to my side, I've got a little bowl of water, which I'll be using and uh, uh, to help control any water on my brush. I've got this little dabby rag that you, you know, get rid of excess water with. So that's that's it really. It's it's uh, on a board. Let's start wetting the paper. So I tend to start my paintings by doing the farthest point away first. So I'm going to come down about that far to the supposed horizon which is there. And we're going to thoroughly wet it. Uh, even, even down onto this area that you might think, oh well that looks like it's land. But we're gonna do we're gonna do the sky, but we're gonna let it graduate down. So what do we need for for sky? We need some blue. Not that blue. So hard sometimes with uh, some of these blues because you you can't actually hundred percent see what it is. With them. But I'll shut up and start painting. The paper's thoroughly wet and I've got a very wet solution of uh, deep blue. And I'm not just going to be doing the obvious blue areas. I'm going to be painting a general overall blue in most of the painting itself. It's like a a key colour all the way through the painting which helps create a, a togetherness in the painting itself. Now closer to us I'm going to go a little bit more textured and a little bit more brush strokey as you can see in that and I'm using that hair brush to do all of this it covers an area quite quickly and we're even in the uh, water out there a bit a bit more uh, paint around the 
dog make sure that you, you don't hit the dog and I'm smoothing that uh, sky area out and I'm going to take a paper towel or some toilet roll I'm going to blot some of that out and that can do a really nice interesting cloud but what you need to do is scrunch it up into a, a an uneven like a shape if you try doing it uh, very squared you get very squared edges we'll let this dry there's a first layer and then once it's dry we'll move on okay we've given the painting a little bit of time to dry it's not quite dry but it doesn't really matter as long as it's not totally wet so we're going to start applying uh, some areas over the top with another layer so now I'm going to come down a, a little bit obviously we were using this big brush to cover uh, large areas before but we're going a little bit more detailed and when I mean detailed I don't mean doing every little tree we have to think in a a lot less detailed way when we're doing watercolour painting and the way that you get that reality of it looking in the distance is how you bring the layers forward with various levels of colour detail and and tonal value because something in the background will have a greyer value than very vibrant colours in the foreground so let's now um, get some splashes of green on this and one thing we haven't looked at yet uh, I think that the light is coming in this kind of direction not that it means an awful lot in this particular painting but we'll get a little bit of green in there I don't know if you can see that whether it makes much of a difference and it's it's almost like just a silhouette of colour it, it, don't try uh, painting loads of details because it'll just not look right and now we're going to make it a little bit more vibrant and unfortunately on the video you might not see the subtle differences of uh, colour that you're going to get as you come forward and this is a fairly dry brush and I'm going to go like that and I think it goes round there and at the same sort of point I'm going to I'm going to sprig out like that with that Now, using that same colour, there's, there's areas of uh, various different amounts of um, greenery and vegetation there. There's also, I need to uh, dry it off a little bit and go. And there's also, I don't know whether that's a, a reflection there. Not right sure. But next, from that, wanna, uh, there's a cliff top. And I'm, I'm trying, going to try and do this fairly dry if I possibly can. I'll, uh, No, it's 
it's not it needs to be uh, a slightly different color I'm going to put a bit of brown in it that's it and look how I've made it right spriggy and dry and then I'm just going to move it along like that as though it's some some kind of rock face and I really do need that to be a lot browner and round here again there's, there's some like I don't know it's a bit of a an ill of some sort and while, while we're uh, adding uh, various colours uh, to give it an overall feel that it's all got a consistent togetherness uh, let's get a little bit of twigginess there not too much and and start building up that but only very very lightly because we're going to be doing several layers of this and we don't want it to be too overbearing so if we can uh, and this is all quite dry brush uh, that means there's not an awful lot of water in the in the mixture of the paint and that does then give you a very strokey kind of feeling so I'm happy with that for the time being but again we're going to let that all dry and uh, we'll layer over it again so we'll be back in a bit when it's dry we're going to uh, add uh, another layer now but I'm going to start with uh, seeing if we can get a little bit of detail in in the uh, in the water here so I'm just And really don't go over it we're just creating like little stripes there like that and there's one thing about watercolour that we need to pay attention to and that's the importance of blending things in when you can making sure that there's links to certain things And this is not the the best example of um, linking areas because there's very distinct areas. But uh, more often than not, there are areas of paintings that you can very easily link together and make the painting a lot more a whole thing rather than it being a lot of very uh, separated individual objects which is absolutely not what we want so uh, even though we've not painted the uh, the dog yet I'm, I'm, I'm going to start to suggest that because lights come in this way it is creating a a bit of a shadow so it's gonna it's gonna be slightly darker than the areas around it there we go. Right, while we've got that dark in we'll see if I'll dry that off a tiny bit and we'll go up here and a tiny bit of detail in there that area there you go a little bit and uh, we'll see what we can do here and while we're while we're doing that area I'll see if I can uh, 
the right if you notice in the um in the reference image you, you can't really see that that's an orangey color it is but let's see if i can uh, make it a bit more obvious to you there's also around this area here I can see something I'm not going to go over the top with that I'll just suggest that there is some other colour and strangely there seems to be some little orange flowers there just using the end of the brush to make it look like it's all joined up now we're uh, going to move on to uh, some of the darker areas I'm going to mix some brown with some blue which will make a fairly dark colour and then I'm going to bias it towards a green if I can get some green to work there we go and uh, this area around there little bits up round there and get get things to be defined a little bit And less and less of this kind of stuff as you go as you as you go further back and you can do that by drying your brush off and it becomes much You know, there's less paint on your brush, and you can slowly but surely. There we go. Let's bring some uh, bits of detail there. And um, we're not that far off being done with regards to the background. Let's uh, just see if I can uh, do some. reflection there don't seem to be that much reflection there but it is a fair distance away that so what we now want to start having a look at is uh, blocking the dog in so we're, we're going to get some of that dark brown again and put it with a blue so we've got a because it's almost silhouetted the dog so and again with a fairly dry brush I'm gonna making sure that you avoid any areas that might be white obviously like I nearly just did there um, and, and dogs are quite fluffy well this particular dog is so I'm gonna when I get to edge of its body, I'm going to leave little bits of uh, fluffiness there. And then one other thing we need to do is uh, there are bits of the dog's body that really need to be heavily emphasised. Uh, like its legs there. So you know that it's got some legs and uh, this is where we blend certain things in that color can blend into there because you don't necessarily see all the details um, uh, and then I'll uh, just 
Yeah. Fill the head in, really. Try to be really careful about what I'm doing there. Round its ears. I'm going to dry my brush off a little bit and see if I can very carefully in this white area put a very light feather in like that. Now that might need a, a, another couple of goes over it but we're starting to get there with it and, and while, we're, while we're there let's try and introduce some of this colour that we've used into the uh, the grassy area so that it ties in a little bit and uh, again using that idea that you're only really going to get detail in the foreground in this particular picture it's not always the case but So we've got that now starting to blend in nicely. Let's again uh, get some dark brown and mix it with some blue, a, a dark blue, and we're going to chisel that out a little bit so that we've got a, a nicely defined dog. This bit of the nose here that we're doing now will be slightly lighter because it's it's bending into the uh, into the light, and uh, I, I assume it's a shepherd dog. This, so th they have like patches of white anywhere in various spots, and that's generally uh, something each individual dog has a different spot. Uh, again, keep doing that, and then we've got a consistency again. And I want to make sure that it don't look as though I've just uh, painted up to the dog, so I'm going slightly over with it as well. Let's see if we can take some of this dark stuff and bring various features in. And we're getting to the stage where the dark paint now is becoming quite dominant. So we have to be careful about how much we're putting on because it can make or break a paint in some dark areas. Like that. And I'm I'm being um, sparing with it, and again I'm I'm thinking about the detail. Bit in the way. Some twigs going off up into the uh, from there to that area. And uh, really now all I want to really do is paint that in. Now what I'm going to do is use uh, a more detailed brush for doing that. So we'll leave this to settle for a few minutes. And uh, we'll finish off the detailing on the painting. So I've got a, a, a Japanese calligraphy, calligraphy brush even. Um, this will do the job for all the detailing and uh, although we call it detailing it's just added extra interest it's not making something hyper detailed should never really do that with any 
watercolour painting, make it that hyper detailed. Uh, some watercolourists can do that with the paintings, but they've been well practiced for many, many years. So, you know, that's their gift. But if, if you're only just coming into watercolour painting, you need to learn to do, see the big picture and paint the big picture first and then, and then gradually build yourself into detailing if you feel that that's what you want to do but uh, so I'm going to get a, a bit of brown and then I'm going to uh, so I can get a bit more brown and obviously to the right hand side of this uh, this is the suspension bridge and to the right hand side it's going to be lighter than it is to the left because the sun's coming from the right so, or it is in my painting anyway whether it is in the actual reference images down to whether you want it to be really And uh, there's a few bits. I mean, to be frank, we, we don't want to overdo this, really. And add a little bit of blue to this brown that I've already got. And uh, I'm just going to put a really thin line. Just be careful what you're doing with that. And you don't necessarily have to uh, with things like this do an exact line it's broken up what I'm doing I'm touching it and I'm not touching it that's more than enough that's all we need now obviously the bridge has to have something that traffic goes over so we're going to do that and again it's using a, a Sometimes it touches and sometimes it doesn't touch. There you go. And that keeps it in context with it being in the distance. Let's really now concentrate on the darkest bits of the painting uh, that uh, I can see just uh, in the background. It's going to be very minimal. And you'll get more and more dark bits as you come along. I, I, I don't want, I want to fade that out there. I don't want any dark bits there. And I'm, hopefully I'm going to like... Like that and it, it, it gives it a kind of a link to the fact that that's there. And... Again, I've already done most of the groundwork for the dark areas here, but I do want to get a bit more stronger. So I'm just going to mix up some blue, and it's generally ultramarine blue and burnt umber for doing this, and it does a cracking job. And it's and all I've really done there is wibbled and wobbled about. I've not I've not tried to paint every single tree in. So that's that helps. We're very close to the end. Uh, it's just a matter of this dark area here. Bringing that in there. The only problem is with these um, calligraphy brushes. Sometimes they're a little bit 
that uh, a little bit lightweight they don't take an awful lot of pushing around before they, they give up on you and uh, just to finish off I just feel like I want to put a little bit of uh, uh, yellowiness there and uh, I'll also add a bit there just, just for interest and as far as I'm concerned I think that's roughly the painting done although let's just uh -oh. didn't feel right that but um, I could faff about with this for hours trying to you know pick up on this and pick, try and keep it spontaneous try and keep it as quick as you can and as minimal as you can and you'll have a successful painting so I, I hope you've enjoyed watching how I do this and uh, I hope that you've been able to learn something from it so until I do another painting take care be safe and enjoy creating your artwork that you do bye for now